hello, hello, hello everyone, welcome to Dating and Development. If you know who I am, you know who I am. If you don't know who I am, now you know. Welcome to the channel. Before I start, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Jesus, Mary and Joseph, I'm absolutely frozen to the bone today. It's quite a weird, chilly day in Ireland. But anyways, I know I've been absent for a few days with videos, purely because I wanted to give myself a break. And we've hit about 100 videos on the channel, so hey, put in the work, take a bit of a break. It's allowed, but we're getting back into the swing of it. So hold on to your bootstraps. Now, dating advice from women. Is it something you should take from them? I would say uh, no, I wouldn't necessarily because you don't ask the fish how to get caught. You ask the fisherman how to catch fish. Should I say, you don't ask the fish how to catch fish. You ask a fisherman how to do it. And see, more often than not, women will tell you how they want it to be done for themselves but the thing is there's always a big difference between what they want and what they say you know they can say i want a man to wine and dine me but really you know she wants someone to get in her feels she wants someone to be a challenge and everything else like you know i want the nice guy blah 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 but then they go off and do something totally different like go off the bad boy and that's why i always advocate for believing her actions as opposed to her words it really works a treat and sometimes a lot of women oh like i hate when you say that blah 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 i hate when you say that you can't hold me to uh that you don't believe what i say to believe what i do the thing is because she's not getting away with shit really i don't like when you say that you're probably saying i can't get away from that and i have to take accountability for my actions now this girl here offers dating advice and this comes from the website her.ie i'll link it in the description below if you want to give it a read yourself and the tagline is shifty first dates the her guide the her.ie guide to dating in ireland boys and buses and big booty bitches in a new weekly feature her.ie goes behind enemy lines to see what it's really like to be single in ireland Ooh, spicy uh from speed dating to making speedy escapes, our no holds barred blog will follow one girl's attempt, one girl's attempts to venture into the dating jungle, play the field, and share any wisdom that she finds along the way. Yeah, this won't be her for her case, realistically. Um, but like, look, imagine a guy writing about this on a well-known like website. All oh, here's what I did with these girls who were very shifty didn't want to be around them. Oh, how dare you feckin' wanker. Um, they say you should never run after either of the above and they also say that you'll be waiting for ages for one then two will turn up at the same time. Boys and bosses, huh? Boys and bosses. I hate when that happens. I hate when I'm waiting for a boss and the boy turns up. I hate it. In my, and I hate this as well. This is an Irish thing. It's like since we Love Island started. It's like the whole, oh, like the, the girls start calling men, or oh, the boys, a boy. Oh, I've been seeing a boy. It's like, I'm a fucking man. I've been seeing a boy. <clears throat> boy. Read a boy. Like, I, oh, a boy. I've seen a boy lately. It's just really annoying. It's like, like look, I'm a man. <laughs> like, just see, I'm a man. But I'm a boy. I'm below the age of like 18. But hey, men burden of performance in society you have to earn your man card a different topic for a different day uh, in my experience both of these sayings are sage advice and certainly reflective of my dating journey so far from a mostly chaste existence that the pope himself would approve of my love life has become as busy as Conley station over the past few weeks so much so that my friends have started ended have started ended their night out <laughs> You know, fucking great grammar. Um, they're night out invitations with the line, but you've probably got a date. Ooh, spicy. Actually, I've only been on a handful since I kicked off my shifty first date experience. I'm a lady, you see. I've got to point out she's a girl. You got to point it out. I, I was, I thought this is a toaster speaking to me. To be honest, didn't know it was a lady. I'm glad that was clarified. And while I haven't stumbled across anyone I'm willing to derail my expedition for, I've been pleasantly surprised at the lack of crazy that I've come across on my dating journey. Now, this kind of goes into that kind of Cheryl Sandberg whole open hypergamy thing. Now, she's dating around, getting a taste of everything. And then, you know, nothing's caught her eye because 
she's probably still out enjoying herself. Now, who knows? I don't know how old this girl is. Do I want to know? Not necessarily because I'm not interested. But let's carry on. The last time we spoke, I had just gone on a date with this snowboarder and have enjoyed another perfectly lovely evening with the man himself. However, the jury is still out and the lady should never put all her eggs in one man's basket. So I've been chatting to a few other potentials. Also, I'd like to keep you posted on any developments. Turns out with Tinder, it tends to be a feast or a famine at this stage. I'm feckin' exhausted. Would you shut the front door for God's sakes? It's a feast or a famine. It's a constant feast for the ladies. Jeannie Mac, if you're an average enough looking woman with a good physique and that, you have your pick of the litter. There was this one girl I was talking to. Take a sip of coffee here. For all the ASMR fans out there. There's this girl I was talking to. And I said to her, like, look, if you're average on Tinder or you're just above average, good looking and everything, you have your pick of the litter. She's like, oh my god, like, I don't think so. That, that's not true. You know, if you put me and a group of other girls in the room, we'll discuss this and say it's not true. Of course you're going to say it's not true because you don't want to admit the game. If you give away the game, you've lost. Oh, shit, I lost the game. Crap. <laughs> Sorry, folks. But it's a constant feast for the ladies, and it's a famine for the man. But it depends where you are in the scale of being on the sexual marketplace. Where you are, are you, you know, below, middle, top, which percentage you rank on. But as I've constantly said, the average woman wants the above average man. You know, I see it here in Ireland. I see it in a lot of other places. But, you know, this is the Charles Sandberg. Cheryl Sandberg. Um, statement here put all my that put all my eggs in one basket I'm looking around the place she's having her fill she's having too much fun with this because the attention the validation is highly up there you could call this experimenting but really it's just a facade carrying on ever since I've started writing this blog people have been going um, mental oh no spilling all their dating secrets so I figured out it was only fair to pass on some of these words of wisdom so if you're about to start your tinder journey take heed of the following pointers all right guys this goes for you right <laughs> joking don't do the exact same pose as everyone else you know the one shoulders back chest forward bit of a pout I'm told that guys are getting a bit sick of the overly posed selfie so try something a bit more original to attract a better center of guy Look, guys will be looking at your breasts regardless. If you have a side, like, and a lot of girls are doing this, and like, it really, really drives me demented. Where, you know, they have the hands on the hips, and they have their bum showing, or like, they're in, like, you know, not scantily dressed clothing, but like in bikinis and whatnot, but like, you know, posing, and like, you've got the cleavage, I got the chest pose showing. And it's like, oh, life is not meant to be uh, boring. You have to live your life every day. It's like, <laughs> How would they get in the way with having such, I suppose, not provocative picture, but a very showing picture, but with a motivational quote underneath it? That's just with me spreading my ass cheeks and going, you never know what life brings. It makes no sense. Don't plaster on the makeup and tan. Yes, please. There are some girls I know and they look so much better without the fake tan. I know some girls wear it to feel better and, you know, a lot slimmer in that as well obviously every guy has a different preference on this and the it is the full sh if the full shield is your everyday look then knock yourself out however i've been really surprised by the amount of guys who have mentioned they like a girl who looks a bit more natural so don't think you need to look like a kardashian to get them to flick you in the right direction and particularly flick the bean number three don't be afraid to make the first move waiting for a guy to approach you is so last century if you like the look of a guy, take a chance and send him a message. Very few girls actually do this. There's, I say, I can count on f 10 hands how many girls said that they like the look of me on Tinder. Not many do it. Like, I've had to make the first move on a lot of them. And, like, did it f come to fruition? Yeah. So a, good, a good portion did. But, like, you know, nothing too serious. Maybe a, a few dates. I will go a few of them, that was about it. Um, but a lot of the girls told me the first move. Like, if their level of interest is high in you, straight off the bat, then yeah, 
which is you have like the girls on tinder like a three-tier system like tier three the lowest tier is like um they swipe left on you the middle tier is they'll like you but they won't reply they're indifferent and the top tier is the ones who reply unlike you and have a high level of interest that's how i see it and usually the the middle one preoccupies a lot of things. The bottom one too, because women have the pick of the litter on Tinder. If they see a guy who they don't like, great. But it's a case that, okay, he's six foot, but oh, he's bald. Swipe, he's six foot, he's got hair. Oh, but he's not this occupation. Swipe, six foot hair, he's this occupation. But blah, blah, blah. They want more and more. And the standards are extremely high for them. It's a bucket list. Men, we just want nice boobs and... Um, a friendly hand to shake carrying on but girls will make, really make the first move nights out the women who make the moves and nights out are very aggressive women usually in their masculine side and i'm talking about nights out like in the nightclub and everything else and they have a high level of interest in you initially don't be afraid to ignore people a lot of girls do this if you don't look a certain way they ignore you if things are a bit slow do not be tempted to reply to that guy who send send you as slightly who sent you jesus christ almighty definitely no grammar is not their strong point um apps like tinder can be addictive that doesn't mean you should lower your standards you shouldn't but then again the standards are being raised because they pick the litter it's hypergamy fine and well you can just choose don't be a weapon while this may seem to contradict the last point it's important to tell that all guys were not born with a rock solid ego and easy charm ego is i wouldn't call it ego a rock solid ego you know ego is the voice in your head that tells you you can't do it or that it's you can do it but to too much of an extent i would never say mountain like confidence they can't be straight off their center and easy charm they might have a slightly average opening line make a stupid joke or ask the same questions as the guy before them or if your instincts say that they might be a good one cut them a bit of slack but women won't I think the one thing we have to remember on Tinder is that girls don't look at bios, really. Not necessarily. And it's very looks orientated. I'm sure, there's an algorithm on Tinder where it's the hot people are matched to the hot people. The So their cards are stacked towards the top. The average people, the average people, the ugly people, the ugly people, their ca- cards are stacked in the middle. And their cards, the ugly people, their cards are stacked at the bottom. That's what they call the profiles you swipe into your called cards so it's an algorithm the more matches you get the more hotter you're likely to be seen so the higher of the top you will be so if you're not really getting many matches it that tells the algorithm algorithm that people are swiping left on you a lot of the time or maybe people just don't use it but look who am i to judge i'm no uh, i'm no algorithm expert um great gonna carry on um, date number one, we'll go to the dates and we'll judge how the men did in the dates. Still fucking cold, sorry for my language. <clears throat> date number one, Tom, 31, IT, Wexford, coffee and drinks on date number two. Kept agreeing with everything I said with a double, hmm, mm-mm, nice guy, but I had to say sayonara when on the second date I asked you always reply to the questions with mm, and the response I got was mm-mm, all right. IT straight away. Not many people I know in IT are uh, great linguists when it comes to ladies. Because I would associate IT something not being exceptionally social. When it comes to activities, coffee and drinks on date number two. Fair enough, but I go with date number two to drinks. Try and escalate it um, for the no pants dance if possible. But obviously consent wise and everything else extremely important but if you're going to reply with "Mm -mm," and everything else then obviously you're not going to get a girl because you have to ask her questions that will elicit positive responses positive responses elicit positive feelings and if you're asking them and making her feel good then she will associate you in feel in feeling good um date number two john joe should i say 33 mature student longford coffee so I texted him, we've got nothing in common. There's probably no point in meeting up. To which he replied, I give me a chance, at least meet me for coffee. First off the bat, 
terrible response from him, I'd automatically see her text as a test, as a poopy doopy test, a poopy whoopy test. Um, which says, we have nothing in common, shut me up. It's like, oh, such a shame. You're missing out on a great guy like me. But hey, look, if you change your mind, let me know. And until then, talk, talk whatever. Um, or let me know when you change your mind. And leave it at that, and then wait for her to get back in contact. If she doesn't, it's a win-win situation because either you'll find someone better or she'll get back in contact with you. It's usually a test. Um, it's the takeaway. It's a takeaway. that I would definitely say that's a test. Uh, but if you can definitely judge from conversation, because you get a bit of a feel. Now, if they're texting a lot, that's something I wouldn't usually advocate for. But if you are on the phone talking 15 minutes max, not two hours, two hours, you are turning into her um, same gender uh, male girlfriend because she's not she's going to place you in the friend zone you have plenty of time on your hands you're not going to be on your purpose or working on your life's mission or doing things you should be doing to self improve then you're cutting yourself at a loss there um i duly obliged turns out that joe still lives with his mammy and hasn't left i hate the word mammy and still hasn't left the country since 1996 when he went to a football match in england he doesn't have a passport omg no holidays Sean, 29 barrister, drinking cinema, boring, great film though. Rule of thumb. Rule of thumb, never bring a girl to the cinema, or to the movies, or to the pictures, whatever you call it. Do not do it. It's a terrible thing to do. First of all, you can't make conversation. Second of all, it's loud. Third of all, you're sitting in silence beside her for a good chunk of the film. Are you developing rapport that way? No, you're not. Cinema can be quite costly when you add snacks. To the price of the ticket and everything else as well so really not a great choice i would stick to the drinks as always stick to the drinks because at the end of an evening like after work you really want to be getting out and relaxing not going to the cinema i know cinemas are relaxing but on a date it will be a great thing to do uh day number four day 30 banker coffee followed by a pint nice guy good chat but just no spark. Onwards and upwards. See that nice guy. Failed her tests. That's why I see nice guy as. He failed her tests. Very genuine. Probably agreed with everything she said. Didn't stand up to her when she probably tested him. No spark. Because he was getting her the feelings. He wasn't escalating. Date number five. Solid evidence that I'm just too nice. If someone proclaims themselves as too nice. Then really. Are they actually nice? Coughing. I got a text. I'm just in town. Might treat you, treat myself to a sunbed. That's it. That's a deal breaker. I'm sorry, but I'm not looking for a guy who's more into himself than I am. Once again, I use the word, we've got nothing in common line. And once again, I get, ah, go on. Give me a chance. At least let me buy you a coffee. Ah, okay. I'll come as a nice, understanding me again. So I set up a day for half an hour later. No effort. Don't care. Look like crap. Whatever. <laughs> Jesus, this guy going to the sunbed to catch up in his tan. Like, maybe he just wants to look good. All right, we've got nothing in common. You could be having a great conversation. Again. We have nothing in common, but men, please stop replying with, "Oh, go on, please." Do the takeaway. Do the takeaway. But realistically, it goes on for a while. Um, I don't want to read that. <sighs> and finally, Michael Thirsty works in social media. Pint and live band. You see live man loud enough music but it's a great day recommendation you know you enjoy music you're doing something fun together and pint and the thing is with dates to speed up, to speed up the seduction process what you can do is have multiple dates in the one date or should i say go to multiple places in the one date so you could go for um pool and then drinks and maybe you know to something else afterwards because in her mind that would feel like a separate date each time but you know just like one time just go and do multiple things but never do lunch dates um oh this guy has three children married separate before christmas um three children see the missus left me she had an affair so does she so she did and she's with the fella now has the children too so like literally the poor guy she had the affair with because she's going to cheat on him in the long run um, Jesus Christ well anyways you can look at that one but men 
watch this channel <laughs> what's, what's the date what's the advice i can give here from a uh, her dot i in relation to dating men learn learn how to court properly learn how to be in your masculine energy learn how to understand female nature just learn everything it will suit you down the long run but anyways that's all the time i've got for this make sure you like comment and subscribe and tune in next time where i will snake charm a cat until then take care god bless and be better